Okay, so to make these cute little beer mugs, you're gonna need these two mini beer mugs. And um, these are actually considered shot glasses, I guess. I bought them in a set of six on Amazon. And I will link to those for you so you can find them easily if you wanna buy them. And then we're gonna use some mixing cups to mix our resin. You're gonna need some resin. So this one I've had for a long time. This is Envirotex. You can measure this out by using a scale or you can use a measuring cup, but you wanna have equal parts of both of these. One is a, uh, one's the resin and one's the hardener. So if you don't get the ratio right, it won't um, set up properly. And mine's old, so this has turned yellow. It's normally both clear. So I just wanted to point that out. I've had this for like a few years. Um, so I'm gonna bring my scale over here. And I'm using a shipping scale because that's just what I have. You could use a food scale. Um, so I'm going to put the cup on there, which I don't think really weighs anything. And then I'm going to put some resin in. So I have point eight ounces for that one. And then I'm going to add 0.8 ounces of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do my second one as well. We're going to make two colors. We're going to do a green beer for St. Patty's Day and just a regular colored beer. So this one I did a little bit less because I think that other one is going to be too much. Okay, so now we need to mix these up so that it's all um, incorporated. So I think it says to mix for two minutes. Now, typically when you're mixing resin, you don't want a lot of bubbles in it. So you would mix it really slowly. But because this is beer and we wanted to have bubbles in it, I'm actually going to kind of go crazy with the stirring and try to get some bubbles in there. Okay, so now I've got both these mixed up. I'm gonna add some coloring. So I wanted to show you this um, before we put any coloring in. I made these two just to try something out. So see how they're not see-through is because I used acrylic paint to color the resin. I wanted to see how it would turn out. And I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't look very realistic. So um, this one kind of reminds me of unfiltered honey. Anyway, after doing that, I ordered some coloring that is for resin. So I got these on Amazon and it has all different colors in it. And it was really inexpensive, I feel like. So it has two yellows. This one is lemon yellow and then this one's just regular yellow. I think this is gonna be more appropriate for the beer. And then I might add some brown too, depending what the, what the yellow color looks like. And then for the green one, we're gonna use this green. And I'll link to those for you as well. So we'll start out with the green one and I'm just going to add one drop and see what the color looks like and then go from there. I don't want to add too much at once and end up with too dark of a color. So I'm just going to put one drop and see what happens here.
So this is going to make it a see-through color. So it's actually going to look like a liquid beer. Okay, so I, I think I'm going to add one more drop of green to this. And then I'm also going to add some yellow, I think. Because green beer is kind of a little bit like a yellowy green color. And then I'm just going to put one drop of yellow and see what that looks like. Oh yeah, this looks like the right color. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so cool. I can't wait. Okay, so you can see there are a ton of bubbles in here. Um, and some of those will pop on their own, but um, a lot of them will pop on their own. Okay, now let's do the regular beer. So I'm going to go ahead and put two drops of this because I had to use two of the green. So I figure I'll probably need at least two here. Okay, and then I'm going to add some brown. So total in each cup, I put five to six drops of color. Okay, so now we're going to put them into the little beer mugs. So when you pour this in, you don't want to get it on the sides of your mug or it's going to be like impossible to get it all off. So you just want to pour it down right into the center. This color turned out so cool. So I don't want this to be all the way to the top because I want to have some room for the foam. So I'm going to stop there. Just be careful not to get it on the side still when you pull it away. So there's that one and see it has a lot of bubbles, but a lot of those will like rise up to the top and pop. So, you know, it has, it'll still have some bubbles in it, hopefully enough to look realistic. Okay. So I'm going to put that one aside and then let's get the regular colored one. You can scrape out the cup with your popsicle stick if you need need more. Okay, so then there's that one. And the same thing, it has a ton of bubbles in it from me stirring. But those, a lot of them are going to rise to the top and um, pop. So hopefully it'll just look fizzy enough. I have those ones that I had already made. And I want to show you some options for the topping for those. Okay, so one thing that I tried was, this is polyfill, the stuffing for pillows that you can buy in a bag. So I, um, you could use this. The thing with this one though is it pops up. So you would want to like put some hot glue or some kind of glue so you could like press it down so that it looks realistic. But I just wanted to show you that as an option, that's like a super easy way to make the foam. And then 
Another way to do it is with the cotton ball. And this actually turns out really cute. I was surprised at how realistic this way, this way looks. Um, so just like pull it all apart so that it's fluffy. And then you can just stuff it down in there. And you could also glue that one in um, if you want to. But there's that one. And then I have a couple more ideas to try. So I use the lightweight spackle to make like a fake whipped cream. And so I am going to try using that mixture I have here. So all you do is mix um, lightweight spackle and a little bit of white paint and a little bit of water. And so then you have this nice um, creamy texture like whipped cream, but I think this could also be a good substitute for foam. So I'm just going to, you could use a piping bag if you wanted to put this in that way, but I'm just going to put it in with this little spatula. And then just press it around until you get it looking how you want. And if you're, uh, when you do this, I would wait for the resin to completely dry before you do any of these toppings. For the foam so there's that one and if you wanted you could like make some drip down the side too well let's just try that let's just try it why not So like some is dripping down the side. And then if you want to pat any of it down, you can touch it with your finger and kind of smooth it out or whatever. So there's that one. And then I have one more thing that I want to try, which is probably going to be more messy, but I just want to give you some options that you can do. So I have this Loctite um, gap and crack filler. So this one is white. Um, a lot of the ones I've seen at the store are like a weird yellowy orange color. I wanted to get the white one to try for this because I want it to look realistic. Okay, so I'm going to spray this right in here. And it's gonna gonna grow, so I don't want to get too crazy with it. I probably should not touch this with my hands, but 
kind of want to smooth it down some so I'm going to use this spatula to do that So there's that option. I'm popping in from the future here. I wanted to show you how to trim these down in case your gap filler gets crazy out of control like this. It expands so much that it's hard to get just the right amount in there. So I wanted to show you how easy it is to trim it down and make it look uh, realistic. So just kind of find a spot where you want to cut it. I'm using an X-Acto knife, but you could use a kitchen knife, anything that you have on hand. So just cut to about how high you want the foam to be, and we're still going to trim around it some more. So. So then... Um, it's gonna look like that, like straight across the top. So you wanna, you know, shape it up so that it looks like real foam. So kind of round out the corners and uh, give it a little bit rougher texture. And I'm just kind of like cutting out little pieces so that it looks not too smooth. And there you have your green beer. Tell me which one is your favorite one out of all of them. Do you like the cotton ball or the spackle or the foam, the um, gap filler? I think my favorite's the gap filler, but I really like the cotton too, which is really easy. And you probably already have cotton balls at home. So here's here's the speckle and the foam. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you have and thank you so much for crafting with me today and I will see you next time.